morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, an Amber Alert still in effect for 11 year old girl from Burnett missing from northwest of Austin. Plus, while the reaction on new legislation passed in Florida that forbids instruction in schools regarding sexual orientation and gender identity in kindergarten through third grade. And more bad news at the pump. An update on rising gas prices in San Antonio and across the nation. Another chilly start, 41 degrees. Doesn't really feel like March outside, but we're on this roller coaster ride. Mike will let us know how things are going to be changing up in the forecast. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday, March 9th. Sarah Costa in for Stephanie Serna. Always so happy to be with you guys. Hey, how Hi, are you? Hey, good, great. Did you get any sleep last night? I did. Good. I slept. I slept so well. I went to Shiner yesterday for a special assignment. I saw that. I saw you with a glass for a promo. It was a very hard story. So <laughs> <laughs> very difficult to go to a brewery and... Uh, but it was actually for Women's History Month. We're talking about Miss Seeley, who actually ran and saved the brewery back in the 1950s and 60s. Yeah, I saw your little oh. teaser, and I'm, I'm interested to find out more on the backstory of, of who saved Shiner Beer. Yes, that is yeah. the story Friday. Okay, coming up. Well, Mike Osterhage joins us now. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Very well, thank you. Turned out to be a nice day yesterday. Clear out a little sooner than expected, and so therefore temperatures went up because, you know, originally we were going for low 50s, got up to 60 yesterday, so we'll even top that today. However, you need a coat this morning because it's cold and it's going to get colder before it's all said and done. We got a lot of clear skies out there right now. Looks like a uh, airplanes off there and final approach 41 degrees out of the airport 30s in the hill country and that's just those two thermometers out there. So in your backyard, it may be below freezing. Then there is still somewhat of a breeze. Nothing here in town. Randolph 10 mile per hour wind. So wind chills 33 at Randolph 28 right now at Kerrville and it feels like 34 in Balverde. Grab a jacket and then later on this afternoon, it's going to be one of those days where if you're in the shadows, you probably still need it because it's not going to be hot, but it will be very nice. And of course, yesterday we had that just, I mean, list as long as your arm with all of the uh, allergens out there, but everything is on the low side. Temperatures this morning, we're going to bottom out here in town right around the mid 30s. So we will see some freezing readings in parts of the hill country. Yeah, one or two clouds out there. Then 64 for a high temperature today. Plenty of sunshine at about 10 to that tomorrow and then subtract about Oh gosh, from tomorrow's high temperature to Friday, about 35 degrees. That's what it's going to be like in the afternoon on uh, Friday, right around 40 and even colder than that in parts of the hill country. And it's going to be kind of wet, and windy, and then we've got some freezes for the weekend. We'll get that all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Thank you, Mike. This morning, an Amber Alert in effect for an 11 year old girl. Police need your help bringing Helen Pierce back home. She was last heard from up in Burnett. That is northwest of Austin. Police looking for an unknown male in connection with her abduction. If you've seen Helen Pierce, please call police. Well, words have meaning. That's a, that's the city Casherville is saying that led to the change in their de police department. The now former police chief there, Brian Jackson, was accused of using a racial slur during a murder investigation. An investigator say it was caught on camera. Casherville City Council accepted his res resignation last night. Words have power, and we must all choose our words very carefully. Um, just as we choose the actions um, that support our fellow mankind, we need to condemn the ones that divide us, that oppress, and that subjugate. Even though the act was condemned during the council meeting, Catraville's mayor still described Jackson as a flawed but good man. The city is now moving forward, looking for an interim police chief. Gas prices continue to trend upwards in San Antonio. AAA says we're only about 20 cents away from hitting our record for the metro area right now. Gas is about 375 on average. While prices here have not hit records yet, overall the nation, national average has. The national average sitting at 417, breaking a previous record of 411 a gallon way back in 2008. In your morning headlines, a number of people forced to escape Ukraine has passed 2 million nearly two weeks into the invasion. Russian troops have laid siege to Ukrainian cities. Top U.S. intelligence officials are warning of a, quote, ugly next few weeks and say Vladimir Putin is angry and frustrated at the lack of progress in Ukraine. The director of the CIA also says the people of Kyiv could run out of food and supplies within the next 10 days as Russian forces advance toward the capital. 
The Biden administration says it will no longer buy Russian oil and that it's still talking to Poland about a proposal to send fighter jets to Ukraine on Tuesday. The Pentagon said Poland's offer to give its MiG-29 fighter jets to the U.S. so they can be passed to Ukraine raises serious concerns for the NATO alliance. Law enforcement departments across the country are backing off on risky police chases. According to data from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, more than 500 people died in police pursuits alone in 2020. One study found more than 5,000 bystanders and passengers were killed in car chases between 1979 and 2013. Municipalities had to pay out large sums of money in lawsuits resulting from those chases. Latest city would restrict the tactic, Cincinnati. It's implementing a new policy limiting police chases to violent, violent felony offenses. Atlanta police also limits police pursuits in cases where violence is suspected. The United States Postal Service is in for a massive overhaul. Last night, the U.S. Senate voted in a 79 to 19 bipartisan decision to approve the Postal Service Reform Act. It removes two large hurdles to the post office's finances. First, it requires postal employees to enroll in Medicare as soon as they are eligible. Second, it drops a mandate that, would, that requires the agency to cover its health care cost years in advance. The House Oversight Committee says these measures will save the USPS nearly $50 billion over the next decade. Some experts are warning that the benefits are strictly financial and may not result in better service for customers. Now to Florida's so-called don't say gay bill. Some lawmakers are fighting back against it as the bill heads to the governor's desk to become a law. ABC's Andrew Fiji has a story. This morning, Florida's controversial parental rights and education bill is one step away from becoming law. We say gay! We say gay! We say gay! Despite protests from LGBTQ plus advocates who've dubbed it the don't say gay bill. What this bill does is this bill creates a lot of fear. But Representative Joe Harding, who introduced the bill, says its critics are lying about the bill's purpose. The bill, all it does is state what is age, it talks about uh, what's appropriate in the classroom to teach. And then it talks about the fact that the parent has the right to be engaged and the education of their children. Under the legislation, lessons on sexual orientation and gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. The bill does not define what is age appropriate. It will also allow parents to sue school districts if they believe the policy is being violated. The bill passed through the Florida legislature Tuesday and Governor DeSantis says he supports it. LGBTQ plus advocates say they worry about students' mental health. I think this bill is vague on purpose because uh, it is trying to silence or push families, students and LGBTQ individuals back into the closet. Supporters say the bill would not keep people from talking about the issues in classrooms, but it will ban curriculum and lessons on it. I value our teachers, the relationships that they have with our students tremendously. The Biden administration has denounced the bill as anti-LGBTQ+. If signed, the bill will take effect July 1st. Similar bills have been introduced in several other states as well. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. 438, about 40 degrees. Still ahead, important questions you need to ask about charity organizations before you donate your money to help people in Ukraine. And up next, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich could break a major NBA record tonight. We'll get a preview of their matchup with the Toronto Raptors. Take a look outside with traffic at 438 this morning. Looks like things are pretty smooth out there. I know I had a very easy drive into work. If we have any issues on the roads, we'll let you know. Quite a bit of traffic down on Petranco <laughs> itself. Uh, out by the airport right now, uh, things are looking really good right now. Dropped out of 40 degrees, so it's even a little chillier than it was yesterday. We get an update on our forecast for the rest of spring break week one coming up. Head coach Greg Popovich can make NBA history as early as tonight with a win against the Raptors at the AT&T Center. Pop's been at the helm of the Spurs since December of 1996, the very day that David Robinson returned from an injury to rejoin the Silver and Black in Phoenix. 
In fact, during a timeout Monday night, Pop strolled across the court to visit with 5-0 and his son, David, in the second row, presumably to ask the Admiral to suit up since the Spurs were playing shorthanded. But don't look for any massive postgame celebration. If he does, that's just not the Pop way. It's hard to put into words, you know, how much of an impact he's had on not only the Spurs organization, but the USA basketball organization and uh, just basketball players in general. You know, young coaches, if you want to be a young coach, if there's any three coaches that you're going to tell them to kind of watch, Greg Popovich always has to be in there. Tonight's game against the Toronto Raptors tips off at 7.30 at the AT&T Center. And good luck to Pop and the Silver and Black. Go Spurs, go. Go Pop. 443, about 40 degrees. So if you're wanting to contribute to helping the people of Ukraine, up next we have some of the best ways you can do that. And next, for the first time, we're hearing from the lead investigator on the case of a woman who faked her own kidnapping. The lead investigator in the Sherry Papini case is speaking out about the five-year investigation that uncovered evidence she faked her own kidnapping. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, the lead investigator in the Sherry Papini case breaking his silence. Getting to this day or this uh, the day last week when this uh, when Sherry Papini was arrested, uh, it's been a long wait. Overnight, the California mother of two accused of faking her own kidnapping. Five days after her arrest, a judge siding with Sherry Papini's defense, releasing her on a $120,000 bond on the condition that she surrender her passport, agree not to leave parts of California, hand over any firearms, avoid consuming drugs and alcohol, and participate in a psychiatric program. It's not over, obviously, but there's still a lot of work to do with the prosecution. And we'll have more of our exclusive interview coming up at 7 a.m. Plus, legal expert Dan Abrams weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. As the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine deepens, so does the desire for many people to help. So, of course, you want your money to do the most good possible. So here's 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with the best ways to provide assistance. As Russia launched its invasion, another movement mobilized, generous San Antonians collecting and giving to help people of Ukraine. And I encourage people to give with their heart, but also give with their head. And what I mean by that is do some due diligence. Kevin Scally with Charity Navigator says to give with impact, give to an organization with a proven track record. Look for you know an organization that has dealt with these situations before. The needs of the refugees and those in the war zone are great and immediate to give effect Effectively, the Better Business Bureau says, ask the charity this. Can they get to the impacted area? Not all groups are in a, a prime position or pole position to get relief quickly. So click to see if the charity already has a presence in Ukraine or surrounding countries. To maximize your dollars, ask how much is going to relief and how much for administrative costs. You want transparency. You know not just where your money go is going, but what is your money actually doing? If you want help finding charities that are helping Ukraine, Charity Navigator and the BBB's Give.org have listed several that they've already vetted. And of course, the scammers are out there, so beware of emails, phone calls, and social media posts that play on your emotions. Independently verify them, and as always, use a credit card to give because they offer some fraud protection. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a look at uh, Transguide right now, see how things are looking out there. I'm seeing a lot of green on the roads right now, which is a good sign. Some slowdowns on 10 heading towards uh, Houston right now as you get outside Loop 1604, but just for a short stretch other than that, construction spots. So, Mike, I went to Shiner yesterday. It was kind of misty and yucky on our drive up, but then I came back to San Antonio and it was beautiful. Yeah, we had the clouds sticking around through about uh, early afternoon, and then they cleared out much quicker than expected, and then turned out to be a beautiful day, as is evident in this picture. Lots of blue skies out there. We've got a few clouds hanging around this morning, then we'll have a lot more blue skies later on this afternoon, and uh, 
about the same or actually about four or five degrees warmer than yesterday afternoon, but we are starting off cooler than that. And obviously um, visibility is pretty good out there. 41 degrees is the wind chill here in town. We don't have much of a breeze to speak of, but out there in Kerrville feels like 26, uh, 33 at Randolph as well as in New Braunfels right now. And the humidity is still very low and that's with the clear skies or mostly clear skies, light wind allowing temperatures to uh, drop down and it's going to remain fairly pleasant throughout the rest of today. Then the humidity is going to start to work its way back in here tomorrow and throughout the uh, afternoon hours, then really come back in here on Friday. So Friday morning, we're going to be starting off very warm and very humid. Temperatures will be in the mid to upper 50s. Then the front's going to move on through here. So as far as uh, temperatures throughout the rest of today, now this one kind of keeps us a little, this particular model, we get warmer than that. We're going to be up in the mid 60s. And then tomorrow, uh, it's going to be about mid 40s and getting up into and this one again, kind of leans toward the cooler side, but will be mid 70s tomorrow and then starting off, like I said, uh, very mild on Friday morning. But here comes the colder air and as the front moves on through temperatures are going to be dropping down into the low 40s and upper 30s throughout the afternoon on Friday. It's going to be very windy and also we will have a couple of uh, showers around the area. Here's what the satellite picture looks like right now. There's just a few kind of high clouds hanging around here. Those will continue to clear on out and yeah, great weather for the rest of today as well as tomorrow, but more cold air up here to the north. That's the actual air temperature two below in cut bank, and then you've got some wind chills up there that are just ridiculous. So that cold air is going to be pushing its way down in here, and that will lead to a couple of freezing uh, mornings Saturday as well as Sunday morning. Going to be real close call here in town. Definitely a freeze in the hill country this weekend. 57 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies. Good looking day, and we top off at 64. So still a little bit on the cool side compared to normal. What a nice afternoon, especially if you're in the uh, sun, not in the shade. Tomorrow we get up to 75 degrees. Then that front moves through third or Friday morning. We start off very mild, very warm, humid. Front comes through here. It is going to squeeze out a couple of showers. It's going to be very windy. Temperatures will continue to drop down. So the difference between Thursday afternoon and Friday afternoon is 35 degrees. And it will feel much colder than that with the wind. And we start off freezing Saturday as well as Sunday. Get up to 60 Saturday and mid to upper 60s on Sunday. Uh, Mike briefly mentioned the other day that a few people have started to see blue bonnets out there yet. Have you seen I have, any? I have a single one that I, it's a reoccurring one that's planted, but it doesn't, it, it looks really weak because it, I don't think it knows what to do. It like came up right. and it was like, wait a second. A little early. <laughs> a viewer sent any picture. I'm going to be showing that later on. Oh, of, good. Oh, of these, the single blue bonnet in their backyard. Right. Yeah I, yeah, I have I have one too, but I think it's very confused right so, now. So we're not quite there yet, but they are starting to show up. Here. Which raises the point, and you being the green thumb person, uh, this weekend, especially in the Hill Country, if you have tender plants out there, you want to cover them. I know. I thought I was done. I, I replanted my flowers in the flower bed after I've been had them in pots to bring them in and out, and I think I did it too soon. Mm, it's possible. Okay. All right, thank you, Mike. We'll talk more about it coming up. 452, about 40 degrees. Well, still ahead, we go behind the scenes of a new Netflix film that was shot in one of the coldest places on Earth. All right, 455, how a new Netflix film was shot in very cold environments, and the hosts for the Oscars are hoping they set the right tone. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. You never think you can't make it. You always believe there'll be a way. Just how cold was it filming Nikolai Kosterwaldo's latest film, Against the Ice? The coldest was 30 below, uh, negative 30 Celsius. In the movie, based on a true story, he plays an explorer looking for a lost map in Greenland, facing real-life storms that forced them to evacuate, and polar bears that were not exactly real, but dangerous enough to give him a concussion. We got this Olympian, this... <laughs> this judo heavyweight champion of Iceland to, to, to stand in for the bear. And he was a strong, he was a strong lad. So he was uh, throwing me around. Against the Ice is out now on Netflix. Amy Schumer getting ready to host the Oscars with Wanda Sykes and Regina Hall. But Schumer says it's been an adjustment, trying to get the tone just right. I, I started out doing those roasts on Comedy Central. So I just like have written some incredibly mean jokes that I would never be able to say. We'll see what she comes up with March 27th on ABC. Global warming, it's so sad. But like, what can we do? Stop buying plastic bottles. <clears throat> this was a gift. And her new Hulu comedy, Life and Beth, is out March 18th.
And another Oscar, Oscar Isaac, with a birthday today, the Star Wars star turning 43, while Pitch Perfect actress Brittany Snow is 36. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. Do you by chance catch Oscar, Oscar Isaac hosting SNL last weekend? I didn't, but I, I kind of have a crush on him. I, I, I watched it. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go yeah. back on Hulu yeah. to watch it. They had a lot of fun. 457, about 40 degrees. Well, still ahead on GMSA, following more U.S. sanctions against Russia, the oil-rich country of Venezuela is offering a goodwill gesture to the U.S. We'll have those details. Plus, we're checking out all the new Apple products that just debuted at their major unveiling. That's coming up in your Morning Tech Bites. We've got some lights on the screen there at 1604 and Pat Booker, Stephen Cavazos just walked in and hopefully he'll give us the story behind that in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A man shot in the head on San Antonio's east side overnight. Just ahead, what police are saying about the victim and the suspect. And as President Biden warns Americans to brace for even higher gas prices following a ban on Russia energy imports, oil-rich Venezuela is offering a goodwill gesture to the U.S. Mother Nature had us, have us, has us rather even a little chillier this morning, down to 40 at the airport. Will we drop into the 30s? We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. Midweek, it's Wednesday, March 9th, and Sarah's in for staff. Hi. Hi. So happy to always join you guys during the week. Um, I am so tired of this roller coaster weather. I'm, I want it to be spring. I want it to be warm. I knew you were tired of it when you broke out the hand, when you started to be, <laughs> be chopping. Listen, Mother Nature. <laughs> She's coming for you. Here's Mike Osterhage. I promise not to take it out on you, Mike. <laughs> She's still doing it over there going, I'm not going to take it out on you, Mike. So, anyway, uh, well, I know you're tired of it, but uh, it keeps you, keeps you on your toes, though. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's going to keep you on your toes this week. We're starting off very chilly this morning. Yes, we are at 40 and no wind to speak of. The dew points at 33, so dry enough air, and we do have mostly clear skies, so almost all the perfect ingredients to continue to drop down. So we'll drop down another uh, four or five degrees before it's all said and done. Then a big warm up throughout the day. We're going to make it up to 64 later on. We're still going to be on the cool side of normal. We should be in the low 70s this time of year. The aquifer went up five uh, tenths of a foot, half a foot yesterday, and the allergens, just a whole slew of everything out there, but everything is on the low side. And the updated count is going to be coming out just after seven o'clock this morning. We do have a slight wind chill to deal with though in places there's no wind like I said here in town but out there in Kerrville feels like 27 feels like 34 right now in New Braunfels so definitely bundle up and it's going to be one of those days where if you're in the shadows it's going to be kind of chilly again mid 60s low to mid 60s so yeah you might want to keep a jacket hand a few clouds around this morning definitely cold the nice nice day sunny mid 60s and even warmer mid 70s tomorrow then it all changes on Friday we have the front moving through looks like about nine o'clock or so in the morning on Friday so we start off very warm very humid then it's going to get colder throughout the day. Temperatures will be dropping down into the about 40 degree or even upper 30s late afternoon. It's going to be wet. It's going to be windy. We've got about a 30% chance for a few showers. Just kind of a raw day on Friday. Then we'll clear out. That's going to set us up for some freezing temperatures again on Saturday as well as Sunday. But it's going to be nice right around 60 on Saturday, mid to upper 60s on Sunday. So overall, good looking weekend, although a chilly start, but enough to keep Sarah on her toes. More on that coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Unfortunately, we are starting the morning again with problems on the roadway. This is the third day in the row that we've been seeing some flashing lights out there on our roadways. Uh, this shot, actually Loop 1604 at Pat Booker Road. A crash has been reported in that area. Our friends at Transguide were able to spin that camera around to get us this location. However, right now we are picking that crash up here in the northbound lanes of 35 at Pat Booker Road. Not causing issues for drivers in that direction, but Definitely something to be on the lookout for this morning. Let's go ahead and push out of the map and show you how we're looking at 504. Looks like another crash may have popped up near Bandera. We'll find out what's going on there, but thankfully no other issues to talk about this morning. There is, are some construction spots. We'll get to that a little bit later on, but thankfully driving into San Antonio, things are looking pretty good so far. I-10 eastbound 24 minutes to the downtown San Antonio. If you're coming in from Bernie, 27 on 281 southbound from Bulverde to downtown, 35 coming in southbound lanes from New Braunfels, just 25 minutes at this hour. 
hour. But as mentioned, we're going to keep our eyes on this 1604 at Pat Booker is a shot from Transguide. However, this is occurring in the northbound lanes of 35. We'll find out what's going on there and give you those updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark, Sarah. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio's police say a man is in critical condition following a shooting on the city's east side overnight. It happened at an apartment complex in the 4600 block of East Houston Street near Sam Houston High School. SAPD says an argument broke out between the 21 year old victim and another man that lives in the apartments. Police said the victim was shot in the head and was taken to the hospital. The suspect ran from the scene and is still on the loose. Gun violence is rising across Bear County and Sheriff Javier Salazar says it comes down to stolen guns. He connects it to gun owners either leaving guns in their vehicles or not locking them up at home properly. According to backgroundchecks.org, which utilizes FBI data, gun related deaths in Bear County have jumped up 12.3% from 2019 to 2020. It bothers you, but I can't say I'm shocked. We're seeing more of it out there. While it's not shocking for the sheriff, it's something that's unprecedented for University Hospital. Doctors there have seen a dramatic increase since 2019. We've seen not quite a doubling, but almost uh, twice as many patients last year uh, with gun in related injuries as we did compared to two years prior. Before the pandemic started, University Hospital's Injury Prevention Unit teamed up with BCSO to give out thousands of free gun locks. That program is still ongoing. It, at KSAT.com, we have information about where you can get one. This morning, cities of Seguin and McQueenie continue to deal with gas services that have been cut off to thousands of customers. As a result, many aren't able to heat their homes. Seguin ISD says the school day is not being impacted. However, the superintendent is advising kids to bundle up as they go to class. He also says the school will serve lunch, but it will be a cold lunch. You can also send a lunch with your student. Meanwhile, city says crews are still having to go back and turn the system back on in every house, and that could take a while. Many businesses like restaurants will stay closed until they can get the gas turned back on. Seguin Public Library will be open if you need a warm place to go. This morning, two Americans detained in Venezuela are now being free just as the Biden administration opens talks with Venezuela about oil supplies. All comes hours after President Biden announced a ban on Russian oil and overnight oil and gas prices rose even higher. ABC's M. Wynn has more. This morning, a goodwill gesture from the oil-rich country of Venezuela, freeing two American detainees, oil executive Gustavo Cardenas, who's been jailed for five years, and Jorge Fernandez, who was arrested on charges the White House called spurious. It comes after Biden administration officials met over the weekend with President Nicolas Maduro to discuss the potential for easing U.S. oil sanctions against Venezuela. The Trump administration broke off diplomatic relations with the country back in 2019. Defending freedom is going to cost. On Tuesday, President Biden announced a ban on Russian energy imports to the U.S., warning Americans to brace for even higher gas prices. That means Russian oil will no longer be acceptable at U.S. ports and the American people will deal another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. It's unclear what impact the ban will have on Russia, the world's third largest oil producer. The U.S. imports only about 3% of its oil from Russia, far less than Europe. But overnight, oil prices rose once again. And gas prices in the U.S., already up 56 cents in the last week, rose another 13 cents in the last 24 hours. Republicans argue President Biden's temporary freeze on new drilling leases has hurt America's ability to produce its own oil and gas. But the White House says, more than 9,000 approved oil and gas leases are currently sitting unused. I would suggest you ask the oil companies why they're not using those if there's a desire to drill more. A Washington Post analysis also found President Biden has outpaced former President Trump in issuing drilling permits on public lands. And the Biden administration previously set a record with the largest offshore lease in the Gulf of Mexico. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 508, 40 degrees. Well, still ahead, we're checking out some of the new Apple products the company just announced, including a low-end iPhone SE with 5G. And up next, for some of you, your vote did not count. Why more than 1,900 votes submitted during the Texas primary election in Bear County were rejected. You know, I don't think Mother Nature knows that it's March and that we should be having spring weather. Still 40 degrees out there, but Mike says 
It's going to even get colder in the next couple of days. He'll explain when we come back. You two should just do lunch and make nice. We really need to do a lunch. Yeah. yeah. Five twelve. the final vote counts are in for the March primary. But it's not the votes not counted that are making headlines. The Bear County Elections Department says more than 1,900 mail-in ballots were ultimately rejected. This is a direct result from the newly enacted voting law, Senate Bill 1. Some things that led to the rejection, signing in the wrong place or putting the wrong info, info in certain areas. Because the design of the envelope is tough. The print is very small by the time they had to put all the legalese on the form. Well, given the upcoming primary runoff and local elections in May, she says election officials will be checking to see what kind of procedures they can put in place to better help voters. Right now, 513, 40 degrees. Well, still ahead, we'll tell you about a major new deal between Apple and Major League Baseball. And Amazon launching a new video, rather audio app that lets you play DJ complete with music and call-ins. Are you tired of clean clothes that just don't smell clean? What if your clothes could stay fresh for weeks? Now they can. Downy Unstoppable's in-wash scent boosters keep your laundry smelling fresh way longer than detergent alone. Pour a cap of Downy Unstoppable's into your washing machine before each load and enjoy fresher smelling laundry. If you want laundry to smell fresh for weeks, make sure you have Downy Unstoppable's in-wash scent boosters. Shop online for Downy Unstoppable's, including our new lighter scent. <laughs> Meet the four-year-old who refused to wear pants this morning. Why, Andy? I'm a dinosaur. Won't wear pants. We'll eat Eggo waffles. Get your wins where you can when you Lego with Eggo. Better skin from your body wash? Try Olay Body Wash with skincare super ingredient collagen. Olay Body Wash hydrates to improve skin three times better, from dry and dull to firm and radiant. With Olay Body, I feel fearless in my skin. Just about 517, Apple has unveiled several new products and a deal with Major League Baseball. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details on what is expected in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple has unveiled its latest low-end phone. The iPhone SE comes with 5G support, a faster processor, and longer-lasting battery. It costs $429, 30 bucks more than the previous model. Apple also announced an updated iPad Air with 5G and the faster M1 processor. Major League Baseball and Apple are joining forces. Apple TV Plus will carry Friday night doubleheaders if and when the season starts. The games won't be affected by local blackout rules, but they will not be available on the the team's regional sports networks. Finally, Amazon's AMP is meant to turn users into a radio DJ. The app lets anyone who signs up host their own show with access to millions of songs and the ability to talk to listeners. It's meant to compete with Clubhouse and other live audio apps. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. All right, 40 degrees. We're going to talk to Mike Ostrage in just a moment. But first, we're going to see what's happening with Stephen Cavazos. Earlier, we had some flashing lights. Yeah, we, and we still have uh, more flashing lights that are actually popping out there, Mark and Sarah. Let's go ahead and take a look around town, see how things have been shaping up for this Wednesday morning. Traffic's still light. Thankfully, in a lot of these shots at Transguard, there's 410 at Starcrest. Looking pretty empty right over there, but other areas are posing a concern for drivers. Let's go ahead and just take you right to the map because we have this crash that's been picked up over on the northeast side, right at I-35 northbound at Pat Booker near Live Oak at the Forum. Uh, this is a crash that was reported a few hours ago, and we've been seeing force responders out, first responders that is out there for quite a while. So make sure that you are driving carefully. We're going to watch it closely, but not impacting traffic just yet. Drive over here to the northwest side. We do have some barrier setting and striping that began overnight. Should be wrapping up on Monday, March 14th. So we still have a few days to go of this. It starts overnight, 9 in the evening until and lasts until 5 in the morning. Keep in mind, the eastbound I-10 to westbound Loop 1604 will be closed at ramp over there. Let's take a drive down over here to 37 near Hackberry because there is some road work still going on as well. Started at a little bit overnight, but I-37 southbound at Hackberry. The exit is still closed at Fair Avenue. Let's get that bird's eye view up the map at 519. No other issues to report, but we're going to watch those roads closely, especially that crash over on the northeast side, guys. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Stephen. Mike joins us now. Mother Nature is uh, to be announced. To be, to be determined on butting <laughs> out. Mm -hmm. yeah. she, 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 girlfriend's just confused. <laughs> girlfriend's you know? confused. Well, I don't, I don't you know. Mother Nature's confused. The trees are. So, uh, like this picture that uh, our friend Yvonne sent. Yeah, the budget, it's like, you, 
wins a time <laughs> to open up. So go back in. <laughs> Probably yeah, not this weekend. So after that, yeah. But um, yeah, a lot of plants are confused out there. So just uh, if you do have some tender vegetation though, and you've already planted it, Sarah. Uh, make sure you cover it by this weekend <laughs> because especially in the hill country, we do have a, a freezing store this weekend. We've got a few clouds hanging around here right now. It's not acting like too much of a, a blanket though on top of us. So that is allowing temperatures to drop down. We're 34 in Comfort, 40 here in town, 36 Bernie stage, and we've got somewhat of a breeze out there. So we do have a wind chill. Uh, feels like 30 in uh, Kerrville, 34 in New Braunfels right now, 40 out there at the airport. And we've got some fairly dry air. So I do think we will drop down a few more degrees before it's all said and done right around mid thirties this morning. And then we add about 30 to that later on today. We've got some moisture upstairs in the atmosphere and this is where some of those clouds are coming from but we will have a lot more sunshine later on today and again temperature is going to warm up quite nicely this model keeps us down a few degrees from where we're going to end up going up into the mid 60s later on today and then tomorrow even add to that about 10 more degrees so uh, again this one is a little bit on the the cooler side but we're going for mid 70s tomorrow then all the changes come in here on Friday we start off very warm and humid here comes that colder air with that front front's going to move through about 9 10 o'clock in the morning that colder air will continue to surge on in here and temperatures will drop throughout the day we are going to have uh, some showers on Friday we're going to have windy conditions on Friday. It's going to be just kind of a boy, throw the blanket back over your head <laughs> during the day on Friday. And as far as the humidity, again, we get the front moving through about nine o'clock or so mid morning on Friday, and that pulls down some very, very dry air. And with that really dry air in place over the weekend, that's going to help to get temperatures down to freezing. So here's what's going on. The upper level steering winds, all the really, really cold air is up there to the north of us. And we do get this, this push of it trying to come on in here by the weekend. Here's the little disturbance, which yeah, may try and squeeze out a few showers here and there on Friday. Then that pulls down the colder air here for the weekend, and we're going to have some beautiful days on the weekend, 60s, so it will be on the shy side of normal, still coolish in the afternoon, but uh, that's after those freezing readings, both Saturday and Sunday mornings. 57 degrees today at noon, plenty of sunshine out there. It's a really nice day. You might want to keep a jacket handy, especially in the shadows, 64 for a high temperature. Tomorrow we start off in the mid 40s and then get up to the mid 70s. Gorgeous day, very warm, kind of shorts and flip flops again, but uh, keep that heavy coat handy because you will need it. If you head out early Friday morning and think nah, I don't need a coat. No, you will because Wrong. it's only going to be about 40 <laughs> or even colder than that by later in the afternoon with some showers and very windy on Friday. Those are the, those are the videos we want you going. Holy cow. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, when that front moves through, you'll you'll know it throughout the days. So. Okay, and hopefully this is it, right? Yeah. Historically, yes, this would be because this is going to be one of the, the later times we've seen freezing temperatures mm -hmm. here. So. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. 522, about 40 degrees. A legendary rock band releases a branded gin, and Hans Zimmer talks about his Oscar nomination for Dune. That's next in your morning spotlight. Welcome back. The band Kiss has turned one of its most popular songs into an actual product. CNN's Rick Damagella has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. It's cold gin time again. Legendary rock band Kiss has launched its own brand of gin named after their 1974 hit song. Described as being five times distilled with no artificial flavors, Kiss Cold Gin joins the band's three styles of rum in their adult beverage portfolio. What's to become of our world? Hans Zimmer received his 11th Academy Award nomination for the original score for Dune. The composer cites the Frank Herbert novel as his favorite book from his youth, with one of its central motifs inspiring his music. Ultimately, there was one thing that I wanted to really, really rely on, and, 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 and that was the, the, the female voice. Okay, let's try, let's try one, okay? One, two, three, four. <laughs> If everything is abstract, I wanted to have one thing that was timeless and you could recognize. And my suspicion, knowing the book really well, the female characters in one way or the other, 
drive the story forward. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Science fiction movies you'd hear. 527, still 40 degrees. Still ahead, how the U.S. and lawmakers are reacting to Russia's new plans to further escalate the war in Ukraine. Plus, we'll tell you why Kohl's says it's no longer calling itself a department store. And we'll tell you if Texas is among the states that cheat the most at online puzzle game Wordle. Cheater, cheater. Pumpkin eater. Two neighbors disagree in a big way. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say one of them shot the other. I'll tell you more about it coming up. Another chilly start to our Wednesday morning. 40 degrees at 5.30 this morning, and it's just going to get colder. Not feeling like spring yet. Michael, let us know about your, the end of your spring break forecast in just a bit. All right, good morning. It is Wednesday, March 9th. I'm going to address this again in about an hour, but can we address the bride in the room? Sarah Costa is getting married this weekend. And it's her last day working for a little while. For, yeah, I'm I'm getting married in Corpus Christi in my hometown at my parents' yeah. house. A really small wedding, and uh, um, we'll be gone for the next two weekends. Yep. So I'll miss our viewers and stuff, but I'm also going to probably be turning my phone off and enjoying my life. And you so. should. <laughs> and you should. Best wishes from your KSAT family. More on that coming up later Thank in the you, newscast. Mark. Thank you, guys. Of course, Mike. And he is a very lucky guy. Thank you, Mike. And I've been bugging Mike and all our meteorology department about the weather this weekend. I don't say, <laughs> wouldn't say bugging. <laughs> Maybe more of demanding. <laughs> she wanted a pinpoint forecast, what, a month ago? Hour by hour. <laughs> in your particular spot in Corpus Christi. Uh, it's going to be very cold in the morning, but it will be a nice afternoon. So, And it won't be too awfully hot. So if you have any outdoor activities planned for your wedding down there, it's not going to be uh, too hot. Now, as far as... Uh, what season it is, it's going to be transitioning into spring today a little bit more and then definitely tomorrow and then it's back to winter right after that. So we get a little bit of everything this week. We have mostly clear skies right now and temperatures are definitely on the cold side. 40 dew points at 33 so we can still and there's not really any wind to deal with here in town a little bit in parts of the hill country. So we still will uh, be dropping down because we have mostly clear skies with the dry air and the uh, the light wind out there. 35 both Kerrville and Comfort. So in some of the low lying areas in the hill country, it may be below freezing right now and 37 in Seguin, but there is somewhat of a wind chill to deal with up there in Kerrville. It feels like 30 and 34 in New Braunfels right now. We got just a it's like a CVS receipt here as far as how much uh, we've got at the allergens out there. Good. I mean, yeah, that, that pretty much describes it, but everything's on the uh, the low side. 57 at noon, 64 for high temperature today. So good looking day. Still on the cool side of normal. We get up into the mid 70s tomorrow, but it all changes on Friday. Details on that and the closer look at the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What's going on, sir? Hey, good morning, Michael. Sir, hey, right now we are looking at some flashing lights. These are actually textile crews that are out there 37 at Hackbeard. We mentioned this shot a little bit earlier in the newscast. Uh, this exit at Fair Avenue is unfortunately still closed as crews are working to wrap up this uh, particular construction zone. But let's go ahead and start here on the northeast side because we have a few things to talk about. I-35 northbound at Pat Booker Road. We have a crash that's still out there, so make sure you drive carefully through that spot. It doesn't look like it's clearing up anytime soon. We have this stall off of 410 southbound to State Highway 151, and we want to drive over here where you saw those flashing lights off I-37 southbound at Hackbeard. Again, that exit at Fair Avenue is still closed, but thankfully wider look at the map 530. Those issues don't seem to be causing major problems for drivers, but something to always be aware of. If you are traveling into San Antonio, thankfully no delays just yet. I 10 westbound pretty green from Seguin with 29 minutes, 87 coming in northbound from Lavernia, just 22 minutes. And right now from Floresville, our friends over there, 28 minutes to downtown SA. Right now, one last look at 37 at Hackberry. It does look like those northbound lanes. We're seeing traffic moving out there, but we're going to continue to watch roads closely and have more of these updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie, Mark Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say bad blood between two neighbors had left, has led to bloodshed. They say one man shot the other at an east side apartment complex. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with this story. So Katrina, it sounds like police know who their suspect is. Have they arrested him? 
No, the last word we had is that police were still looking for him. Now, they say that man ran off right after the shooting. They did find the victim, a 21-year-old man, still at the apartment complex in the 4600 block of East Houston. Officers got the call right around 10 o'clock last night. They say that man had been shot in his head, and he was in critical condition as he was rushed to a hospital. The police say the victim and suspect both lived at that apartment complex and apparently had a disagreement in the parking lot. The neighbors reported hearing a loud argument or shouting just before they heard the gunshot, and then they told police they saw the suspect run away. And again, the last word we had is that police are still looking for that shooter this morning. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. It's 535 here. You're looking live at Kiev, Ukraine this morning, where it is now 135 in the afternoon. U.S. House of Representatives is set to proceed on a bill that clamps down on Russia. The bill would, in part, challenge Moscow's place in the World Trade Organization. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, this comes as U.S. officials expect Russian President Vladimir Putin to escalate action in his neighboring country. Ukrainians remaining defiant in the face of danger, protecting their country from the Russian invasion. It's our land, independent. Nobody can enter our land. And if someone is entering, we have to answer. At least 474 civilians have been killed in Ukraine since the attack started nearly three weeks ago, according to the United Nations Human Rights Office. And U.S. officials expect a threat from Russian President Vladimir Putin will increase. He's escalating. He's uh, more prepared than ever to consider doing some unreasonable uh, damage and terrible atrocities in Ukraine. Plus, uh, he's looking for an opportunity to strike out at NATO. The U.S. is sending two Patriot missile batteries to Poland to be used as a, quote, defensive deployment aimed at countering potential threats to the U.S. and its allies. The pressure has uh, ra risen a little bit and that Putin is feeling it. He can't get back at the United States for the increasingly tough sanctions. So he's going to use what he has, which is the threat of, uh, of weapons of mass destruction. The UN says more than two million people have fled Ukraine since Russia invaded, and they're hoping for an end to the fighting. We're not Nazi. We're just on other land with hands up. Please, we want to live, we want to be happy. Stop shooting, please. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Rising gas prices leading to something we haven't seen in a while. Long lines at gas pumps in some areas, especially states like California. This is what it looked like yesterday at a gas station in the San Francisco area where they were selling cheap gas at $4.95 a gallon. This station is known for selling some of the cheapest gas in that area of California for regular unleaded if you pay cash. Price made lines at the pump longer than usual. For a perspective, drivers just down the road are paying a dollar more at a Chevron station. A quarter of a century has passed since the shooting death of rap legend Biggie Smalls, a.k.a. the notorious B.I.G. Smalls, whose real name was Christopher George Latour Wallace, was killed 25 years ago today on March 9, 1997. He was leaving a music industry party in Los Angeles when a vehicle pulled up to the Chevy Suburban he was riding in and opened fire. The iconic rapper was just 24 at the time. And at the height of his success, his murder remains unsolved to this day. Smalls was killed just six months after his former friend and rap rival Tupac Shakur was gunned down in Las Vegas. Tupac's killing also remains unsolved. 538, about 40 degrees. Still ahead. Okay, Mark, do you cheat at the online game Wordle? No. No, I, don't. I swear. I, I promise I don't. <laughs> All right, we'll tell you which states tend to cheat the most. And next, why COVID may be to blame for a recent rise in the flu in Bear County. You know, it really hasn't been the most enjoyable weather for the spring breakers this week. 40 degrees this morning, another chilly start, and Mike says it's only going to get colder. He'll explain when that cold front will come in in just a bit. Time check 541. COVID cases are down, but Metro Health says flu cases are creeping up in the San Antonio area. And if you've come down with the virus, there's a reason your symptoms feel more intense than usual. As Stephanie Jimenez reports, it's something else you can blame on COVID.
And I've been careful and I've been masked and I live alone. For the past two years, Nina Eckstein has done everything possible to protect herself from COVID, avoiding large groups, masking up indoors, and it's worked. She never got the virus. Same thing with John Von Dolan, although he's been exceptionally virus free. I haven't really gotten a, the flu or a cold or anything in the past two years either. In Texas, flu cases usually peak in January or February, but that can change because the state's health department says that cases have peaked as early as October and as late as March. But there are several different factors that can affect the timing. Uh, normally, this time of year, uh, we're kind of at the end or uh, certainly on the downswing for influenza season. Uh, we've actually seen an increase um, in influenza cases that are laboratory confirmed here since about mid-February, and, and it's still going up. Dr. Brian Alsip, chief medical officer at University Health, is especially concerned about that because now more people are holding gatherings and fewer people are wearing masks, making them more vulnerable. And let's say if you skipped a cold for a year or two or certainly skipped uh, it for you know a, at least a year, uh, maybe you have a little less of that uh, natural immunity than you might have had before, which means your body's all of a sudden being presented with a new pathogen, ramps up your immune system to fight it off, and you probably feel that effect uh, more than you might have before. Dr. Alsip says that doesn't mean you should avoid safety measures. He recommends following the same safety protocols, like masking up for a little while longer until flu cases wane. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. 543 temperature has not changed about 40. A pet is ready to go home with you today. Oh, look at that precious pup. We'll visit the Animal Defense League next. We'll talk about snug as a bug in a rug. Yes, here. Well, puppy in a baby. Bag and Julie's here from the Animal Defense League. And who's this little baby? This cutie pie is Walrus. He's in our puppy building, <laughs> building 12. And we actually have a lot of puppies right now. So if people want to come and see us, we've got a lot of angels to choose from, just like this guy. Okay, that thing's just spoiled rotten, wrapped up in that blanket being held. He like is. That. He's only two cute? months old, and oh. he is a German Shepherd mix. You don't look any more like a German Shepherd. Than no, you. no. So, oh, Okay, hi, uh, yes. So, uh, what you got going on, by the way? Okay, well, we are, we have lots of puppies, but mm -hmm. we, we really have no kittens right now because kitten season has not hit yet. But last year, kitten season was explosive. We actually had a thousand more kittens last year than we did the year before. And that was because of the pandemic, because people weren't able to trap, neuter, and release. Mm -hmm. So, one thing we're asking the community to do is to sign up to foster for us because even though we don't have a lot of kittens right now, we will. We're going to go from famine to feast. And you can foster itty bitties you can foster a little bit bigger ones they give you everything you need we give you everything you need whatever time period you choose mm -hmm. great uh, lesson for the kids to take yeah. care of I mean if you bottle feed you're up all night long it's like having a that's one, right so. and we need lots of bottle feeders we also need lots of supplies mm -hmm. so people can go to our website which is adltexas.org and um, if they can donate supplies to us for our foster program that is also extremely helpful and ADL has a uh, float in the Battle of Flowers parade we and of course, do Talking about the uh, medal now. That's so you can right. Head on over there and get one of their uh, one of their Fiesta medals. And uh, great. And that one's for you. Oh, you're very kind. Thank so. you very much. Go to either campus, please, to buy a medal, and it supports 100% our life-saving um, abilities. So we appreciate it. The or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. Don't forget mm. about the PetSmart over there on Walls. Um, 655-1481 is the number to call. Thank you, dear. In your morning consumer headlines, McDonald's is pulling out of Russia. It's temporarily shutting down its restaurants in Russia and pausing all operations there. In response to the invasion of Ukraine, the fast food giant has more than 800 locations in Russia the end of last year. The CEO says their values mean they cannot ignore the needless human suffering unfolding in Ukraine. Starbucks and Coca-Cola have also ceased operations in Russia. Cole says it's not going to be a department store anymore. Instead, it's going to be adding Sephora mini shops to about 75% of its U.S. stores and open about 100 new locations that will be about half the size they are now. Uh, more of a focus on fitness, athleisure, and jeans. The company also says it's going to bump up its popular Cole's cash rewards and shake up its online strategies. All right, more people are cheating to beat the popular online game Wordle. A study by WordFinder X looked at Google's search trends for the answer to Wordle's daily puzzle busted. <laughs> it found that the words players cheated on the most were swill and aroma. Really? 
Well, okay. okay. This study also found New Hampshire had more Wordle cheaters than any other state. Rhode Island and Vermont were tied for second place. Texas is not even in the top six for cheating. The site says cheating has nearly tripled since the New York Times bought the game in January when the game went viral. Does cheating count if you're if you're like writing it down on a piece of paper? Like, you know what I mean? Instead of like you're, you're, you're going over the different variations on a piece of paper. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, it's not the same as using, you know, Google for help or one oh. of the cheat sites or yeah. something. No, I will rack my brain. I'm going over it. And then the person next to me is playing it. I was like, I got that. They're like, I got it. Yeah. Like you have done to me before. Have I? Yeah. Uh, at least once. <laughs> 549, let's uh, check on traffic with Stephen Cavazos. I don't, I've not played that yet. I should try it out. Stephen, during commercial breaks, it's the best. Oh, well, you know, I will try my best. <laughs> uh, you know, make sure that you do not have your phone if you are getting behind the wheel this morning. Let's go ahead and get a look right now. 410 at Starcrest. Things are moving pretty nicely in these shots of Trans Guide. However, there are some issues to be on the lookout for. Drivers, beware because this is an area you're going to want to avoid. I-35 northbound at Pat Booker Road. I've still seen some flashing lights out there from Trans Trans guide over on the northeast side because of that crash. So watch out there. Not too far. We have some road work that's actually also taking place overnight or later this morning. March 7th will last up until March 11th from 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. Keep in mind, drivers can expect a single lane closure of the northbound frontage road from Judson Road to Topper Wine Road. Let's take a drive over here because stalls are starting to pop up. Uh, Loop 410 South at State Highway 151. We still have a we also have a stall here off I-10 eastbound at Giver Street. And as we get a look at the map, that's what we're seeing more of. More of those stalls as you can see a new one off of 281. We'll find out what's going on there, but thankfully no other issues to report just yet. Just remember no distracted driving. Do the Wordle maybe when you get to work. Guys. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, Mike is here with a close up of the moon, and uh, I don't see an impact site from this Chinese rocket part that hit earlier this month. No, no. I was going <laughs> to say, you two those sound like my uh, my wife and my my son talking about Wordle. So. Wordle. Uh, my Wordle. mom will text me. She's like, I got it in three tries. That's what they do. Yeah. Um, never, never played it. Oh, you, oh okay. Mike, yeah. you would be really good at it. I feel like you'd be good at it. I don't know. Anyway. All right. <laughs> anyway. Beautiful shot of the moon. Waxing. Listen up here because the caption says it all. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, oh. that's a lawsuit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wonder if Skywatcher is a lawyer, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> and the moon is going to be full on the 18th, by the way. And like I said, it's the, uh, the waxing crescent right now. We've got a few clouds hanging around here this morning. Cold temperatures, 40, wind chill. Uh, we don't have uh, much of a breeze here in town, but out in the hill country, it feels like 32 at Kerrville, 34 in New Braunfels. So not like, um, you know, winds that we have had nor will be having because it's going to be very well. Got a front that uh, popped on there that should be scooched over just a little bit, but we are going to be up to 75 tomorrow, 64 uh, today and really start to warm up. Then that front moves through here. And so the bottom is going to be dropping out on Friday. And it's going to be very windy and it is going to be very, very cold throughout the day with temperatures dropping down throughout the day. We're going to have some rain mixed in as well. It's just going to be one of those kind of, uh, you know, as I always like to describe it, grilled cheese and soup sort of a day on Friday. And notice how though the low temperature, or I should say the morning temperature is going to be in the mid and and even upper 50s. Then as the front moves through, the temperatures drop throughout the day. And then as we clear out Saturday and Sunday, we're looking at freezing <laughs> readings around here, and then it warms right back up going into the first part of next week. And this will be a, obviously an unusually late freeze, not the latest ever, but well past a uh, few weeks past the average last freeze. Now, Satellite picture. Got a couple of clouds hanging around here right now. They are going to be clearing out later on today. They have acted like a bit of a blanket out there, but not a real thick cloud layer and got some freezing precipitation, some snow and everything else up there in the higher elevations, obviously of the Rockies, but also some really, really cold temperatures as nearby as Oklahoma City. It's 24 and single digits up there further to the north with some really cold wind chills up there. And that cold air is going to continue to push on in here. And that's what's going to push through with the front. And that's going to move through about nine o'clock or so. It looks like right now on Friday morning, 57 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, good looking day. May want to keep a jacket handy, especially in the shadows. 64 for a high temperature then. And tomorrow, very warm, good spring-like day, 75 degrees. Front moves through early on Friday and will drop throughout the day. Windy and wet and then those freezing temperatures. But a good-looking weekend, but freezing temperatures to start off the weekends. A lot more coming up after this. Stick around.
morning coming up here on a Wednesday edition of Good Morning America. We'll begin in Ukraine and President Biden announcing a ban on Russian oil imports, what it means for Russia and gas prices here at home, and the new details on that proposed plan to give Polish planes to Ukraine. And the breaking news overnight, two Americans being held in Venezuela have been released following talks with the Biden administration as it considers lifting oil sanctions there. You're going to see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Head on GMSA in our next hour, we'll tell you about a special kind of equine therapy that's making a big difference in the lives of young people in our area. And Katrina Weber is staying on top of an overnight shooting in an east side apartment complex. She'll join us live at the very latest. Trans guide right now, flashing lights, 1604 Pat Booker Road area. We've been tracking this now for about an hour or so. And Stephen Cavazos will have an update for you coming up. New this morning, an argument at an east side apartment complex turns violent. Now one man is in the hospital with a gunshot wound. We'll have the latest on his condition. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. As Ukraine holds off the Russian army, the CIA director is warning that as Putin gets angrier, his attacks may get uglier. The latest coming up. A man hit by gunfire on San Antonio's west side while he was pumping gas. We'll tell you what we know so far. Taking a look outside with live cam, 40 degrees, another chilly start to your spring break. And Mike has some unfortunate news for spring breakers. It might be getting colder to wrap the end of your break. He'll explain in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, March 9th. Yeah, we are about to wrap up spring break part one. For other folks, part two is next week. Yes. Uh, and I'm, I, you know, I'm excited for this weather, but I'm really not. I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay positive. I know I've kind of been mean about Mother Nature being all over the place. All we're missing right now is that sound on a roller coaster is headed towards peak one. That and then tomorrow it's going to fall again, right? Yeah, yeah. That that's tomorrow we peak, and then just getting into Friday, and then it's going to. And then we then we hurl. So, and then yeah. <laughs> this time Friday morning, we're going to be watching the front approach us. It should be uh, coming through in about nine o'clock range on Friday morning, maybe a little bit after that. So it'll be warm and humid Friday. And then, yeah, bottom drops out. So fun does not look happy. No forecasts. And we've got a few high clouds out there right now. Uh, not really enough to, to kind of be a blanket on top of us because we're almost 10 degrees below normal right now. 30s in the hill country and obviously with 33 degrees at Kerrville, maybe freezing in your backyard out there. And we have somewhat of a wind chill in places. Feels like 36 here in town. Not much of a breeze, but just enough to add that little bit of a, a bite to some of these temperatures. And again, we just have a, this whole laundry list of allergens out there. Everything is trying to come into uh, into to bloom for the spring, even though it's going to feel like winter by Friday. And as far as temperatures this morning, we'll continue to drop down a few more degrees and then nice big warm up throughout the day. We'll almost double our temperatures. We're going to make it up into the uh, about mid 50s by noon. Plenty of sunshine around here and then we'll finish up in about mid 60s. So we're still going to be all six, seven degrees or so below normal, but then add to that tomorrow about another 10 degrees, mid 70s, and then subtract, oh, about 35 degrees for the afternoon temperature on Friday. Plus, we're looking at some freezes by the weekend. We'll get that all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso, has been pretty quiet on the roads. Yeah, we've really only had one problem out there this morning, Mike. 1604 at Pat Booker, we've been talking about it for over an hour, but thankfully it has been quiet in other spots. Uh, this is over on the northeast side, and our friends at Transcott actually had to turn that camera around so we can get a closer look at the scene that's uh, still developing out there. We do have road flares and flashing lights indicating the first responder presence. But drivers be on the lookout because that is in the northbound lanes right there of 35 near Pat Booker. You're not seeing so much of an impact in those northbound lanes, but we are inching closer minute by minute to morning rush. So make sure that you are planning ahead. Let's take a drive back here over to the northwest side because we do have uh, stalls to seem, to seem to be popping up. I 10 westbound at UTSA Boulevard. Drive down over here. We have one off Loop 410 southbound at State Highway 151. And as we drive over here, we spot another one off I 10 eastbound at Geaver Street. So stalls are starting to be the trending issue.
issue, but that usually does happen when more people get out on the roads. So check those vehicles. Thankfully, our neighbors aren't going to have any trouble coming into San Antonio this morning. 28 minutes, minutes plus the drive from Pleasanton to downtown San Antonio. 18 minutes if you're coming in from Highway 90 and Castroville in those eastbound lanes and 17 minutes, little time from Lytle on 35 northbound. So good stuff there, but not looking good here. 1604 at Bat Booker. We'll see how this impacts the morning drive as the morning does go on. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man fighting for his life after an argument led to a shooting on the city's east side. Happened around 10 o'clock last night at an apartment complex on East Houston Street, not far from South WW White Road. That's where police say two men began fighting when one of them pulled out a gun and shot the other in the head. The 21 year old victim was rushed to the hospital. He's currently in critical condition. At this time, no arrests have been made. Gun violence has been on the rise in our area and Bear County Sheriff Javier Zalazar says it comes down to stolen guns. He says it's a result of gun owners either leaving their firearms in their vehicles or not locking them properly when they're at home. It's not something BCSO tracks, but it's something Salazar said they should. According to backgroundchecks.org, gun-related deaths in Bear County jumped more than 12% from 2019 to 2020. It bothers you, but I can't say I'm shocked. We're seeing more of it out there. While it's not shocking for the sheriff, it's something unprecedented for a university hospital. Doctors there say they've noticed a spike in gun-related injuries as well. We've seen not quite a doubling, but almost uh, twice as many patients last year uh, with gun-related in injuries as we did compared to two years prior. So before the pandemic started, University Hospital's Injury Prevention Unit teamed up with BCSO to give out thousands of free gun locks. That program is still ongoing, and you can head over to KSAT.com for information on where you can pick one up. A 16-year-old student facing a charge of arson. Investigators say he's accused of starting fires near San Antonio's Brennan High School. It's on the far west side near Loop 1604 and Weissman. The first one happened last Thursday. Sky 12 flew over the scene that day. Altogether, about six acres were burned. Thankfully, no one was hurt. A teen in this case has been referred to the Bear, Bear County Juvenile Justice System. Some other top stories we're following this morning. Law enforcement departments across the country are backing off on police chases. That's according to data from National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. 532 people died in police pursuits in 2020 alone. Another study found that more than 5,000 bystanders and passengers were killed in car chases between 1979 and 2013. And municipalities have paid out large sums of money in lawsuits resulting from some of those police chases. The latest city to restrict the tactic, Cincinnati's police department. It's implementing a new policy limiting police chases to violent felony offenses. In Argentina, at least 21 people recovering from injuries this morning after this train derailment. It happened in the eastern city of Olavaria. There are no reports of deaths, and those who were hurt apparently only had minor injuries. The devastating war in Ukraine pushes on as Russian troops close on several key Ukrainian cities. The U.S. warns food and supplies in the capital of Kyiv is running low and may be out in just a matter of two weeks. This comes as President Biden ramps up the U.S. response against Moscow, now cutting off Russian oil and gas imports. ABC's M. Wynn reports. Good morning. Overnight, we're learning an air alert was declared in and around the capital of Kyiv, with residents urged to get to bomb shelters. This morning, thousands flee besieged Ukrainian cities under a temporary Russian ceasefire. But just earlier in the northern city of Sumy, a Russian airstrike killed several civilians. Ukrainian officials releasing new drone video showing the destruction, destroyed Russian vehicles with troops inspecting the damage. Already, more than two million people have fled the country. It, it's really hard, especially when we've left again everything. As Ukrainians hold off the Russian army, CIA directed Director William Burns told Congress that Russian leader Vladimir Putin is frustrated, having anticipated a quick victory. He's been proven wrong on every count. Where that leads, I think, is, is for an ugly next few weeks. This comes as the Biden administration rejects Poland's plan to arm Ukrainian forces with more air power. In a surprising move, Poland announced it was ready to transfer its fighter jets to U.S. forces in Germany, with an understanding they'd be given to Ukraine while the U.S. would replace punish its arsenal. But the Pentagon said the idea was not tenable, as it would drag the U.S. and NATO into the war and further inflame tensions with Russia. 
The CIA director also told lawmakers that as Putin gets angrier, he's likely to try to grind down the Ukrainian military with no regard for civilian casualties. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Well, the post office is in for a massive overhaul. Last night, the U.S. Senate voted in a 79 to 19 bipartisan decision to approve the Postal Service Reform Act. It removes two large hurdles. The post office has finances. First, it requires postal employees to enroll in Medicare as soon as they're eligible. Second, it drops a mandate that requires the agency to cover its health care costs years in advance. The House Oversight Committee says these measures will save the USPS nearly $50 billion over the next decade. Some experts are warning the benefits are strictly financial and may not result in better service for customers. Well, as expected, Apple unveiled its latest low-end iPhone. The iPhone SE comes with 5G support and faster processor and longer lasting batteries. Costs $429, 30 bucks more than the previous SE model. Apple also announced an updated iPad Air with 5G and a faster M1 processor. Major League Baseball and Apple are joining forces. Apple TV Plus will carry Friday night double headers if and when the season actually starts, the games won't be affected by local blackout rules, but they will not be available on the team's regional sports networks. Right now, the league and Players Association are in a lockout amidst collective bargaining discussions. Staying with sports for a moment, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich can make NBA history tonight with a win against the Toronto Raptors at home at the AT&T Center. If the Silver and Black win tonight, Pop will pass coach Don Nelson for the most career wins in NBA history. It's a moment you won't want to miss. Tip off set for 7.30 tonight. And good luck, guys. Right now, 6.10, about 40 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a man is busted trying to smuggle dozens of reptiles Ooh, into the U.S. We'll tell you how he almost slithered away with it. And President Biden is warning Americans to brace for even higher gasoline prices following that ban on Russian energy endpoints. Oil-rich Venezuela is offering a goodwill gesture to the U.S. that might, might help. 40 degrees at 611 this morning. Another chilly start to some people's spring break. Mike says, oh, we're going to brace for another cold front. He'll let us know when that's going to blow in. We come back. Two Americans detained in Venezuela are now being freed just as the Biden administration opens talks with Venezuela about oil supplies. Yeah, all this comes hours after President Biden announced a ban on Russian oil and overnight oil and gas prices rose even higher. ABC's M. Wynn is tracking the latest this morning. This morning, a goodwill gesture from the oil-rich country of Venezuela, freeing two American detainees, oil executive Gustavo Cardenas, who's been jailed for five years, and Jorge Fernandez, who was arrested on charges the White House called spurious. It comes after Biden administration officials met over the weekend with President Nicolas Maduro to discuss the potential for easing U.S. oil sanctions against Venezuela. The Trump administration broke off diplomatic relations with the country back in 2019. Defending freedom is going to cost. On Tuesday, President Biden announced a ban on Russian energy imports to the U.S., warning Americans to brace for even higher gas prices. That means Russian oil will no longer be acceptable at U.S. ports and the American people will deal another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. It's unclear what impact the ban will have on Russia, the world's third largest oil producer. The U.S. imports only about 3% of its oil from Russia, far less than Europe. But overnight, oil prices rose once again. And gas prices in the U.S., already up 56 cents in the last week, rose another 13 cents in the last 24 hours. Republicans argue President Biden's temporary freeze on new drilling leases has hurt America's ability to produce its own oil and gas. But the White House says, more than 9,000 approved oil and gas leases are currently sitting unused. I would suggest you ask the oil companies why they're not using those if there's a desire to drill more. A Washington Post analysis also found President Biden has outpaced former President Trump in issuing drilling permits on public lands. And the Biden administration previously set a record with the largest offshore lease in the Gulf of Mexico. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington.
Here at home, we are keeping our eyes on the roads, and unfortunately, things have not progressed here off 1604 at Pat Booker. This crash was reported earlier in the morning, and we are still seeing first responders out there working to clear this mess up. We are hope that we do hope the drivers uh, that are possibly involved in this crash are okay, but not causing issues just yet. Thankfully, it's still morning, still young, but we are spotting a pretty uh, small build up there off of Pat Booker near 35. Looks like it's improving, but again, drivers be on the lookout for that. Uh, we are also spotting some debris here that was detected off I-35 northbound at Eisenhower Road, not causing issues, but drivers watch out for that. Make sure you are aware this morning of the roads and the conditions. We do also still have some road work that's actually been stretching for quite a while here off I-37 southbound at Hackberry. The exit is still closed at Fair Avenue. Let's get a look at the map at 617. You can see more of the problem that we're spotting are those stalled vehicles. Uh, so there's some here off of I-10. We have that one off 410 and State Highway 151. So make sure you are checking your vehicles before you get out on the roadways this morning, but make sure you give those drivers plenty of room and especially first responders who are out here off 1604 at Pat Booker. Again, the shot at Trans Guide shows that it's still quite the busy scene. Guys, yeah, that rare shot with IKEA in the background yeah. there on the Live Oak area. Yeah, they were able to switch the camera around so we can actually see thank what's you, going Trans on. Guy. Thank, thank you, Trans Guide. Thank you, Trans To our friends at Trans Guide, and thank you to Stephen Cavazos. You're welcome. All right, Mike. I know yes. there's some kids that are in spring break, but then some are still in school. Till next week. Right. And yeah. next week is yeah. looking a little more spring breakish. Okay. Breakish. Well, lucky for those spring breakers. Because <laughs> this week, well, hopefully you packed everything. Uh, <laughs> that seems to be the case all the time around here. This morning, we will continue to drop down into the uh, mid 30s. A couple of clouds are hanging around. We've got a few high clouds out there and just a slight breeze, so slight wind chill. And then 64 later on this afternoon. And it's going to be a really, really nice day. All right. We were talking about blue bonnets earlier. And Sarah, you said you had. One in your backyard. One lone bloom. It hasn't really bloomed like this one yet. It's this isn't yours, though. No. No, okay. this is not yours. And so, yeah, it's a, yeah, just one little uh, blue bonnet right there. Very pretty. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. And, of course, when the blue bonnets really start to, uh, you know, bloom all around the area, make sure you take pictures, but do it safely, obviously. Uh, Good view out there at the airport. Like I said, we do have a few high clouds hanging around as of right now. All right, we are looking forward to some freezing temperatures coming up here this weekend. Now, the average last freeze, we've definitely uh, passed that. That's February 24th, the latest we've ever hit freezing here officially in San Antonio. It's back in 1987 on April 3rd. Now, Going a little, little sooner in history, I guess, or a little more recent in history, uh, back on March 30th in 2003, we did hit freezing. That's second on the list of the latest ever freezes. And then just a few years ago, back in 2006, this is the the last time it was this late that we hit freezing. And that's seventh on the list. It was March 24th. So it is looking like a pretty good chance of hitting it again this, uh, coming up this weekend, both Saturday as well as Sunday. Friday, we start off at 55 degrees. However, in the afternoon, we're only going to be at 40 because that front moves through right around last check. It looks like about nine o'clock in the morning. We'll start off very warm and humid. Front comes through. Winds pick up. We are going to have a couple of showers around on Friday, and it's just going to be so kind of those one of those raw days and temperatures will then continue to drop down obviously getting down to freezing by Saturday and Sunday and then nice big warm up and then going into next week it looks like we're going to be hovering right around the uh, most of the, around the the mid 70s so yeah if your spring break is next week it's looking a little bit more like shorts and flip flops weather instead of this week, which is a combination of everything. 57 degrees today at noon, so coat this morning and maybe not need it this afternoon. 64 degrees, but then it's going to cool off fairly quickly once the sun goes down tonight. Back down to 45 tomorrow morning, but all the way up to 75. Very spring like, and then the bottom drops out during the day on Friday. That front moves through. We're going to have some showers around the area. It's going to be windy on Friday, just sort of a, again, a raw day, 40 by late in the afternoon, and freezing, excuse me, Saturday morning as well as Sunday morning, and then up into the 60s. So a good looking weekend, although kind of on the cooler side. And of course, before you go to bed Saturday, mm. such clock, I know, such no. clock. Wow. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? That's how we what all just feel. <laughs> so, most, I mean, at least here, a lot of folks love daylight saving time, but uh, uh, yeah, you got to set your clock. That was ahead. Sarah's audible emoji for everyone to ex express themselves that's, for that's the time. That's me hitting change. the snoo. Again, no, no, for not those yet. <laughs> that don't like daylight saving time. A lot of people are, are looking forward to it. They love the hour 
in the afternoon. Of we'll see if we can come up with something else for you to do this weekend that will take your mind off of yeah. the time change, okay? <laughs> More on that coming up next half hour. Right now, 621, about 40 degrees. Well, still to come, the lead investigator in the Sherry Papini case is speaking out. You don't want to miss what is being revealed about the five-year investigation that's uncovered evidence she faked her own kidnapping. That's next in your GMA First Look. Why hide your skin? If Dupixent has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control. Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixent helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixent, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent, a breakthrough eczema treatment. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, the lead investigator in the Sherry Papini case breaking his silence. Getting to this day or this uh, the day last week when this uh, when Sherry Papini was arrested, uh, it's been a long wait. Overnight, the California mother of two accused of faking her own kidnapping. Five days after her arrest, a judge siding with Sherry Papini's defense, releasing her on a $120,000 bond on the condition that she surrender her passport, agree not to leave parts of California, hand over any firearms, avoid consuming drugs and alcohol, and participate in a psychiatric program. It's not over, obviously, but there's still a lot of work to do with the prosecution. And we'll have more of our exclusive interview coming up at 7 a.m. Plus, legal expert Dan Abrams weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. 626 and 40 degrees. We have a lot more heading your way in our next half hour, including new reaction to a controversial education bill in Florida. What people on both sides are saying about how it can impact, impact some of the youngest students. San Antonio police are investigating after a shooting at an apartment complex in the city's east side. Katrina Weber is standing by the latest in a live report. San Antonio police say two neighbors go far beyond arguing. They say one shot the other. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the details coming up. Outside with live cam, a little bit cooler this morning than even yesterday, hovering right around 40 degrees. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning. It's Wednesday, March 9th. So happy to be here with you gentlemen filling in for Stephanie. Glad you are here this morning. Uh, she's calm on the surface, but underneath probably nervous <laughs> excitement and anticipation. Our Sarah Coast is getting married this weekend. Oh, thank yeah, you so guys. Congratulations from your yes. KSAT family. I we know you're, it. you're been planning this for a while now and you're I ready have. to go. I'm ready to go. And I, I I'm usually very private about my my private life, of course. Um, but I appreciate you guys being so supportive, especially the meteorology team who I have been bugging. Thank you, Justin Horn and Sarah Spivey, because I literally have been like, can you all do a 20 day out forecast <laughs> hour by hour and, to this particular location? And Justin wouldn't sugarcoat it. He's like, that's impossible. <laughs> It's impossible. Get He's back like, to me. Stop asking. It yeah. was starting last April. What's it going to be like on? Yeah, that was a little weird. Yeah. But anyway, congratulations. Yeah. We're Thank happy you for your best wishes. It's been so fun hearing about it and, mm -hmm. you know, and your planning and everything like that. So. Thank you. I, I think some of my coworkers are even more excited. I like Mike always asking me about all the details and stuff. I'm not I'm not a, a big wedding girl, but I am. I am excited for this, this Good. weekend. Yeah. You should be. <laughs> And she's going to make a very beautiful bride. Thank you, Mike. So, all right. It, and it's going to be nice weather on Saturday, too. A little cool in the morning. If you're, uh, what time's your wedding? Uh, not till the evening. Okay, well. 5 p.m. It's going to be great then. Thank so. you, Mike. Coolish, but not too, not too hot. We'll put it that way. All right. Uh, we've got some. Uh, 
a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning, but uh, things are starting to lighten up somewhat and temperatures at 40 degrees dew points at 33 so dry enough air to where I think we'll continue to drop down maybe a few more notches here but we do have a slight bit of a breeze out there so what that does is take these numbers which we are now at freezing in parts of the hill country 34 Bernie stage and we do have a slight wind chill here in town 36 is what it feels like 32 in New Braunfels right now the updated pollen count is going to come out in about uh, usually a half an hour hour or so but Boy, just about everything is uh, trying to bloom right now. A lot of allergens out there, but everything is on the low side. A couple of clouds hanging around this morning. Yes, cold temperatures and then nice big warm up throughout the day is going to get us up into the mid 60s. And then tomorrow add to that, we'll make it up into the mid 70s. Great looking, very spring like weather. Then it all changes on Friday. We have the front move through. It's going to be about uh, looks like right now about nine o'clock in the morning on Friday. So we start off very warm and humid and then temperatures drop down throughout the day. Only about 40 or upper 30s by the afternoon. It's going to be windy. We're going to have a couple of showers around here and yeah, just one of those days you just want to hunker down inside on Friday. Then over the weekend, we are going to be hitting freezing Saturday and Sunday morning, definitely in the hill country, sunny, warm in the afternoon, make it up in the uh, about low to mid 60s for high temperatures with plenty of sunshine in the afternoon. All the details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Kvassos. You haven't had much to talk about this morning. Nah, I'm just here just for a good time. Uh, just kidding. But actually, we do, <laughs> uh, we do have a problem off 16 to 4 at Pat Booker. We've actually been talking about this for over an hour now, but thankfully, some good news. It does look like that crash scene is dwindling down, and we're seeing those flashing lights dwindling down as well. So some good news. Wider look from our friends over at TransGuy. Thank you again for getting us that shot. Let's go ahead and bring it into 35 northbound at Pat Booker. That's where that crash was picked up earlier this morning, not causing any issues, but just be careful out there. Let's take a drive down here. Some debris has been picked up off I-35 northbound at Eisenhower Road, not causing problems, but again, still picked up. So you got to watch out there. Drive over here shows a crash just cleared off of 410 eastbound at Fredericksburg Road. So some good news. Say I come to this hour 630 bearing good news, but as we get a wider look at the map, this bird's eye view at 633, it does look like stalls are the trending problem and it looks like we may have a new crash that popped up off of 37. We'll find out what's going on there, but some other good news. If our neighbors, if you're coming into San Antonio, good, guess what? No delays. All right, now green across the board, so drive carefully. No need to rush out the door, but again, good news out here. 16 to 4 at Pat Booker. We'll continue to keep a close eye on things and give you those updates as the morning does go on. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, it sounds like a major disagreement between two neighbors. San Antonio police say one shot the other. It happened at an apartment complex on the city's east side. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. So Katrina, do police have any idea what this was all about? It seems that they're still investigating that. All they know is that there was a loud argument shouting just before a gunshot rang out. Uh, police found the end result of that, a shooting scene at an apartment complex in the 4600 block of East Houston. That was when they arrived around 10 last night. Police say a 21-year-old man was shot in the head. He was in critical condition as he was rushed to a hospital. Officers say witnesses told them he had been arguing with another man who also lived at that apartment complex. The police say that suspect ran away before they arrived and they did search but did not make any arrest at last check. Uh, that is what they told us. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Also new this morning, terrifying moments for a man pumping gas overnight when all of a sudden he was shot. It happened at a Chevron on the west side of town at Loop 410 near Callahan. Now, officers believe the man was hit in the leg by someone firing shots across the access road up 410. The victim was taken to a hospital is doing OK. No word on any arrests. An active Amber Alert is in effect this morning for an 11 year old girl. Police are asking for your help to bring Helen Pierce back home. She was last heard from in Burnett, Texas. That's just northwest of Austin. Officers are also working for an unknown male in connection with her abduction. If you have seen Helen Pierce, you're asked to call Burnett Police. That number on your screen right now, 512-756-8080. Well, to a story now about another child who was missing. That five-year-old boy up in Bandera County, home safe this morning. He was reported missing around 6.30 Monday night after going for a walk with his dog. More than 100 volunteers stepped in to look for little Cameron. After spending a cold night alone, Cameron was spotted walking a field by a DPS helicopter crew just before noon yesterday. There is video from our chopper. That chopper landed, picked him up, and took him to his family. 
So I said, did you see us? Did you hear us yelling? And he said, yes, <laughs> he did. And he said, and he waved him down. We thank God. We thank everybody that was here. Ah, oh, there is the little boy. In total, he was missing for about 17 hours. Again, five years old, folks. Mm. He was dehydrated and had hypothermia. He was taken to a hospital, get checked out, but he is, we are so happy to report, doing okay this morning. Well, the cities of Seguin and McQueen still dealing with gas services that have been out and cut off thousands of customers. As a result, many aren't able to heat their homes. Seguin ISD says school is not being impacted. However, the superintendent is advising students to dress warmly as they go to class today. Meanwhile, the city says once the pipeline repair is finished, crews will still have to go back and turn the system back on at every individual house. And that could take a while. Many businesses in those areas will also stay closed until they can get the gas turned back on. Techs will be working and walking into yards. So if you have any pets, keep them inside. Words have meaning. That's what the city of Casterville says led to a change in their police department. The now former police chief, Brian Jackson, accused of using a racial slur during a murder investigation. And investigators say it was caught on camera. Casterville City Council accepted his resignation last night. Words have power, and we must all choose our words very carefully. Um, just as we choose the actions um, that support our fellow mankind. We need to condemn the ones that divide us, that oppress, and that subjugate. While the act was condemned during the council meeting, Castro's mayor still described Jackson as a flawed but good man. The city is now moving forward looking for an interim police chief. Happening today, opening statements will begin in the trial of four men who prosecutors say plotted to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer back in 2020. It's all because they were angry about the pandemic restrictions she imposed. Prosecutors say the men surve surveilled Whitmer's vacation home and conducted training with weapons. Six men were arrested back in 2020. Two of them have pled guilty and will be crucial witnesses in this case. One of them says the alleged ringleader wanted the men to chip in for a $4,000 explosive large enough to destroy a bridge near her home and distract police during a kidnapping. Defense attorneys say the men deny any conspiracy to kidnap her. Number of people forced to escape Ukraine has now passed 2 million people. Think about that. And now top U.S. intelligence officials are warning of an ugly next few weeks and say Putin is angry and frustrated at the lack of progress with his invasion. The director of the CIA also says people of Kyiv should run or rather could run out of food supplies within days as Russian forces advance towards the capital. The Biden administration says it's still talking to Poland about a proposal to send fighter jets to Ukraine at the U.S. will no longer buy Russian oil. Gas prices continue to trend upwards here in San Antonio. AAA says we're only 20 cents away from hitting the all-time record for our area. Right now gas is selling for 3.75 a gallon on average in San Antonio. While prices here have not hit the record yet, the overall national average has. National average sits at 4.17, breaking the previous record of 4.11 a gallon back in 2008. We turn now to Florida's so-called don't say gay bill. That's a term critics have used to speak out against the measure, but now lawmakers are fighting back as the bill heads the governor's desk to become law. ABC's Andrew Fiji has more. This morning, Florida's controversial parental rights and education bill is one step away from becoming law. Despite protests from LGBTQ plus advocates who've dubbed it the don't say gay bill. What this bill does is this bill creates a lot of fear. But Representative Joe Harding, who introduced the bill, says its critics are lying about the bill's purpose. The bill, all it does is state what is age, talks about uh, what's appropriate in the classroom to teach. And then it talks about the fact that the parent has the right to be engaged and the education of their children. Under the legislation, lessons on sexual orientation and gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. The bill does not define what is age appropriate. It will also allow parents to sue school districts if they believe the policy is being violated. 
The bill passed through the Florida legislature Tuesday, and Governor DeSantis says he supports it. LGBTQ plus advocates say they worry about students' mental health. I think this bill is vague on purpose because uh, it is trying to silence or push families, students, and LGBTQ individuals back into the closet. Supporters say the bill would not keep people from talking about the issues in classrooms, but it will ban curriculum and lessons on it. I value our teachers, the relationships that they have with our students tremendously. The Biden administration has denounced the bill as anti-LGBTQ+. If signed, the bill will take effect July 1st. Similar bills have been introduced in several other states as well. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. New this morning on KSAT.com, a man tried to slither past U.S. border agents in California with 57 lizards, 52 lizards rather, and snakes <laughs> hidden in his clothing. Why are you giggling? <laughs> man was driving when he pulled over as he tried to cross the Mexico border. They get this, the agents found the live reptiles, nine snakes, 42, 43 horned lizards tied up in small bags in his jacket pants, pockets, and groin area. Officials say smugglers will do everything they can to get products, or in this case, live reptiles, across the border. Really doing everything they can. Hmm. Okay. 642, about 40 degrees. Okay, after the break, we're talking about a special kind of equine therapy that's making a big difference to the lives of young people close to home. 646 SJRC is an organization that provides a home for kids and young adults affected by trauma, abuse, and neglect. Now Triple H Equitherapy is working to help those children by introducing them to horses. As David Sears reports, it's a program that can change lives. This is all Stanley. Come on, bud. You say hi to people? Zoe and Stanley, a human and a horse, creating an inseparable bond from the moment they met. We don't get paired, the horses choose us. The way Stanley had chosen me was he decided to just follow me around when I was going to meet all the other horses. So he just he just decided you were you were the one, huh? Yes, sir. At the beginning the relationship was a little rocky, but things got smoother over time. He's kind of stubborn like me and he just didn't really cooperate a lot. He normally would just stand there and wouldn't move, but as the eight weeks went on, we've really gotten better at it, and we just really gotten a relationship that's more, and well, more um, understanding towards each other. That relationship is what this two hour a week, eight week program is all about, along with learning how to care for Stanley. Uh, most of them have not been around horses, so this also brings a sense of normalcy. Um, they're experiencing something new, and being able to build a sense of trust and bond with these animals is just truly a miracle. As Zoe and her friends ride off into the sunset, this type of therapy doesn't really change the traditional therapy. It's just a way of introducing a different way to look at things. The human horse bond is the key to this program. The horses literally are the therapists. We do have a mental health professional here to help facilitate therapy, but the horses are the ones that make it happen. They are very empathetic. Horses are like humans. They bond with us, they connect with our feelings, they feel our vibe, so they just really help you with coping and everything because they understand you. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. And, uh, you know, I believe that's out near Pipe Creek toward Bandera, so that's something to check out. But uh, right now, drivers may be heading to work, may encounter some problems. Let's go ahead and get a closer look at Transca. It looks like this shot may be out. Traffic's not frozen there, but let's go ahead and see how things are shaping up on 35 at St. Mary's. You can see morning rush has already arrived and has brought some problems out on the roadways, namely stalls. As you take a wide look at the map, let's go ahead and just bring you in. Heads up, we do still have some construction that I hope is wrapping up here on 537 southbound at Hackberry, where that exit has been closed off air. Avenue looks like a crash may have also been picked up off of South Cross. So watch out over there. Let's take a little drive up here. I 10 eastbound at Giver Street. We do have a stall that's been reported over there. Drive up over here. So is another one off Loop 410 eastbound at Evers Road. A little bit further up. It's just continue. I 10 westbound at UTSA Boulevard. That is a trending problem right now. Check those vehicles before you get out on the road. Now let's get check in with Mike Ghost Rage. Thank you very much, sir. And great picture from Woodlawn Lake, Mr. McClellan. And yeah, this guy he says was coming in for landing. Had a little bit of a uh, Rough landing, but 
I guess this pilot say any landing walk away from is a good one. So anyway, thank you very much for that. And as you can see, we do have some uh, high clouds hanging around here right now. Those are going to be clearing out later on. Yesterday we did hit a high temperature up to 60. The forecast was low 50s, but clouds cleared out very nicely in the afternoon. That allowed us to uh, warm up. And then today we're going to be topping that up into the uh, mid 60s, mid to upper 60s around the area. And then add about 10 to that later on for tomorrow and it's going to be nice and warm. We'll get up into the uh, the mid 70s. This model keeps us slightly cooler, but we are going to make it up into the mid 70s. And then we start off very mild on Friday mid upper 50s around here, but notice how there's the colder air coming in here and right about this time Friday morning, then about nine o'clock or so is when that front moves on through temperatures going to be dropping in through the down low 50s, 40s in the afternoon. It's going to be windy. We're going to have some rain around, just a few scattered showers here and there, and then continue to drop off. So it's going to be just one of those bundle up sort of raw days on Friday, and then we'll clear out, and it's going to be getting uh, much colder by Saturday morning and Sunday morning. We're looking at freezes both of those mornings. So here's uh, as far as the humidity and dew point temperatures. They will continue to go up and up the next couple of days and then drop off, and with that really, really dry air and the clear skies, that's going to allow those temperatures to really get cold, and then that starts to bounce back again by the uh, first part of next week. So get ready, a little bit of everything in the next uh, couple of days. Forecast today, a lot of sunshine. We got this clouds of this morning. 57 degrees today at noon and then high temperature is going to make it up to the mid 60s still on the cool side of normal by about so oh, six seven eight degrees or so and then tomorrow we're going to be starting off at 45 degrees make it up to 75 very mild start on Friday front comes through temperatures drop off windy conditions like I said and some rain will only be at 40 or even cooler than that by later on in the afternoon on Friday freezing both Saturday and Sunday mornings but beautiful in the afternoon, plenty of sunshine, and we'll make it up in the low and then mid to upper 60s by Sunday and then warmer going into next week. And of course, don't forget, Saturday night, you got to set the clock ahead, spring forward, lose an hour on Sunday. Sarah, Mark. Mm. Mike, thank you. Thank you, Mike. 651, about 40 degrees. Well, tomorrow on GMSA, some surprising health conditions you might have not known were genetic. Outside with live cam, see how things are looking out there as we're waking up on this Wednesday morning, the ninth day of March. Some streaking clouds, a little bit of sun out there right now, and a little bit of an orange glow way off on the horizon. We'll be right back. Coming up here on a Wednesday edition of Good Morning America, we'll begin in Ukraine and President Biden announcing a ban on Russian oil imports, what it means for Russia and gas prices here at home, and the new details on that proposed plan to give Polish planes to Ukraine. And the breaking news overnight, two Americans being held in Venezuela have been released following talks with the Biden administration as it considers lifting oil sanctions there. You're going to see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. And here at home, as people continue to wake up, we see more people out on the roadways. There's 410 North at Ingram. Morning rush is here. Uh, thankfully, no big issues to report, but be on the lookout. There's still some road work off of I-37 Southbound at Hackberry, where the exit is closed here at Fair Avenue. And stalls seem to be the trending problem at this hour, Mike. Still got some clouds hanging around here this morning. It is cold. Boy, make sure you bundle up. We're still at 40 right now, but freezing out there in parts of the hill country. We do have somewhat of a wind chill and we're going to have a nice day today. Plenty of sunshine up to 64 degrees. Very warm tomorrow and then very cold on Friday and a good looking weekend, but freezing both Saturday and Sunday mornings. And again, congratulations on your Yay. upcoming nuptials this Thank weekend. You. Thank you guys. Have a great day. We'll see you at GMSA at 9.